of expert guides, tutorial and review services, and I am here to discuss another type of word problems, which are mixture problems. Before we start, let me introduce myself. I am Hyrel CJ Ethan, your instructor for today. I graduated with a bachelor's degree in applied mathematics, with a major in mathematical finance at Ateneo de Manila University. I also obtained a master's degree in the same course, also in Ateneo, last year. And aside from this, I was also a previous president at Ateneo Mathematics Society and a lecturer at the Ateneo Mathematics Department. And for today, I will be discussing mixture problems. So when we talk about mixture, paghahalo ng mga bagay, we are talking about questions that involve the combination of two or more types of objects. And here, we consider two types of mixture problems, yung dry mix and yung wet mix. In science, you might be able to distinguish these two as heterogeneous and homogeneous mixtures. In a way, similar yung interpretation natin with the dry mix and the wet mix problems. So first, dry mixture problems. So if you have different items with different prices, such as tickets or coins, bills, or even nuts, products, and they combine for a total cost, then you're talking about dry mixture problems. Another characteristic of these types of problems is that the items must be distinguishable. Pwede mo sila ipaghiwa-hiwalay and i-categorize in that sense. And our underlying equation is as follows. So a sub 1 times q sub 1 plus a sub 2 times q sub 2 and so on until a sub n times q sub n is equal to the total amount. Yung mga a na variable, we are referring here to their amounts. So yung underlying na cost or price, yung mga kinakategorize natin. While yung q, yung mga q na variable, q sub 1, q sub 2, and so on, these are the corresponding quantities. Ilan yung mga coins or bills na may ganong amount. So that is our classification. And the total amount should be stated or given. Or maybe it's what we are looking for in the problems. So let's have a sample question for the dry mixture problem. So here, Jack has a box in his tent that contains 35 coins. Some are nickels and the rest are dimes. If the total value of the coins is $2.75, how many of each coin does he have? If you want to try answering the question, you may go ahead and pause the video. But of course, play it again after. Okay, so in this question, we are talking about coins. In particular, U.S. denominated coins since we're talking about dollars, dimes, and nickels. And it's important for us to memorize the corresponding values of their coins since they have special names for their coins. So a penny is one cent in U.S. denomination, a nickel is five cents, a dime is ten cents, and a quarter is twenty-five cents. What helps me memorize kung ano yung nickel and dime, kasi usually, napagpapapalit ng mga tao yung values nila, what helps me memorize their value is that dime starts with a D. Another word that starts with D is decimal or decimeter, which is expressed in terms of tens. Kaya yun, a dime is ten cents. So now we have this question. If the total value of the coins is $2.75, $2.75, how many of each coin does he have? We have a dry mixture problem since we are combining nickels and dimes, which are categorized separately. So we can have X as the number of nickels and Y be the number of dimes. It is possible to assign two different variables to these coins, but it's better to just use one. Para mas madali yung calculations mo. And how can you do that? You can change y to 35 minus x. Why? Because the sum of x and 35 minus x is always 35, regardless of the number. 
So you're sure that you have a total of 85 coins. Now, since nickels are worth 5 cents each and dimes are worth 10 cents each, then you have the equation a sub 1, t sub 1, plus a sub 2, t sub 2 equals total amount. You have two categorizations of the types of coins. So you can now substitute the values that you have in your equation. So our equation will be like this. Yung first na type ng coin, the nickels, we have an X number of nickels which cost 5 cents each or are worth 5 cents each. So 5 times X. Yung mga dimes naman, they're worth 10 cents each and you have 25 minus X number of dimes. So we have 10 times 25 minus X and this is equal to 275. The reason why it's not 2.75, since we are expressing the numbers here in terms of cents na. And in a dollar, you have 100 cents. So you have this equation without decimal points already. So you can distribute 10 and solve for x in this case. So you have 5x plus 350 minus 10x equals 275. Distributing and combining like terms, you have negative 5x equals negative 75, and dividing both sides by negative 5 yields x equals 15. If your x is 15, then the number of dimes, 35 minus x, should be 20. So overall, Jack has 15 nickels and 20 dimes. Okay? If you got that question, please give this video a like and share this video to your friends, and fellow students. Alright. So now let's go to the second type of mixture problem. Yung mga wet mixture problems. So if you're combining two solutions or two substances that cannot be separated immediately, then you have a wet, a wet mixture problem. So the general equation that we follow is as follows. When we talk about wet mixture problems, we are usually encountering substances that have a particular percent concentration. So the percentages here represent yung concentration ng element na nandun sa mixture na yun. So yung concentration ng original times quantity ng original added to the concentration in the one that is going to be mixed or the one that is going to be added times yung quantity ng mixture na yung add mo is equal to the final concentration multiplied to the combined quantities of those previous containers. We can apply this equation to an example. So, how many liters of a 25% alcohol solution should a chemist mix with 20 liters of a 55% solution to get a 30% alcohol solution? For these types of problems, it's better to interpret these questions with a visualization. So you can have this type of visualization. Meron kang dalawang container, yung isa x liters, then yung isa 20 liters. When you combine them, their total amount in liters will be the sum of x and 20. And then the corresponding concentrations for these types of containers are placed below. 25%, 55%, and 30%. So now you see why the equation before is as such. We are multiplying yung quantity to the concentration. So what our equation is going to be is as follows. This is our general equation, and we can substitute the values that we have here. So yung concentration ng first container, 25%, is multiplied to x, our unknown. And then, yung concentration ng second container, which is 55%, or 0.55, is multiplied to 20. And that is equal to 0 0.30 times quantity x plus 20. So what we have to do now is to solve for x, which we can do via algebra. So you can have 
this expression first or equation first by multiplying all the sides by 100. And then you can distribute 30. So the right hand side will become 30x plus 30 times 20. You can combine like terms to get 25 times 20 equals 5x. And when you solve for x, you should get x equals 100 liters. So overall, we need 100 liters of a 25% alcohol solution. And that is the answer to our question for the second example. And ayun, thank you guys for listening to today's lecture on mixture problems. This is just some of the topics that we will be covering in our enrichment program that Expert Guides is currently offering this year. We will be discussing topics in mathematics, science, and English. And this will be delivered by a roster of really talented and insightful instructors. So if you want to sign up for our enrichment program, you may contact us with the contact details here shown. Aside from this, we also invite you to like our Facebook page here shown as well, facebook.com slash expertguides review center katipunan for you to be updated with our latest announcements and latest uploads on Facebook and on YouTube. And for now, that's it. Thank you for listening. Ingat and pakasaya palagi.